guys. So hopefully you can see that. Uh, yes, I'm seeing a bit of nodding. Um, <laughs> and thumbs up. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, guys. So this is, um, we are the Society of Research Software Engineering. And we're going to do this mini workshop on the RSE landscape. Uh, so what's going to happen is we're going to give you a very quick introduction. We're then going to ask you what your RSE type is. And we'll do that through an interactive Mentimeter. And then whatever time we have left, we will leave it for a sort of open discussion um, in some breakout rooms, but please don't join those rooms just yet. So um, I'm going to presume that pretty much everybody in the room has seen a figure like this before. Um, it's used at all the talks where people are describing what, who is a, a research software engineer. Um, and it's got this lovely arrow, which just points to the middle of this graph between research and software engineering. And that's, that's been really helpful so far to describe what an RSE is, um, but it's not the sort of the, the be all and end all. Um, and in fact, what we don't know is uh, the sort of breadth of RSEs uh, along this sort of spectrum. Um, you know, are we, are we a, a small bunch right in the middle? Do we actually have a bit of a shift in one direction or the other? Or how broad are RSEs? And this is the kind of questions that we're starting to ask as part of the society now. Um, because we want to know how many different RSEs are out there, uh, what different job roles RSEs have, and therefore how we can better support uh, the range of RSEs across what we're calling the RSE landscape. Um, so I thought we would kick off um, by um, telling you where we sit in the research software spectrum and where we work. So I'm going to ask my fellow trustees who are in the room um, if they can... Um, to answer these questions. So I will start by saying I am very much on the software engineering side of that spectrum. Um, I am a RSC in my spare time as a freelance RSC, but most of the time I am just a software engineer. I work at the Wellcome Trust um, and I'm therefore not part of an RSC group, neither am I embedded in a research team. I kind of sit in this weird digital group where we interact with researchers because we are building a platform for researchers, but not directly working alongside them. Uh, Marion, would you like to tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I am an RC and a central um, RC group at Durham University. As such, I'm working um, in different uh, uh, different research groups um, across the university. So I would be uh, very much on the, if you had a central embedded uh, scale, you uh, would find me at the very end of that. But on the other hand, um, two of the big projects I'm working on at the moment are actually ones that I've worked in before as a postdoc or a PhD student. So I would um, actually um, see myself more also on the research side because a lot of um, those things that I'm doing are um, connected to um, the research I'm interested in and the research that I want to still contribute to. So I would um, see myself actually a bit more towards the research side than the software side. So I would not um, call myself a software engineer without the research in front. James? Um, hi everyone, I'm part of a central group within the University of Southampton. Um, we're not in professional services though, I think unlike the majority of RSE groups, um, we're in an academic department in computer science. Um, I work with researchers all across the spectrum really, so I'm not, not really domain specific but I do tend to focus on commercialization type work. So I guess I'm more towards enterprise than research perhaps. And I do, I do maintain some, uh, some of my old research code as a sort of hobby side project just to keep a foot in the research game. Thanks, Paul. Hello, so I'm Paul Richmond. I uh, like to think of myself still as a research software engineer rather than a, a research software engineering manager. I still keep my hands dirty with uh, with code and but even though a lot of my time is around uh, kind of line management uh, of running my group. Um, <clears throat> so I, like my group, uh, are a central group. Uh, however, we're, like James, we're embedded in the, in the Department of Computer Science. Uh, in terms of the kind of the research software and, and 
uh, in terms of the research versus software engineering spectrum, I'm definitely much closer to, to research. Before I uh, undertook a, an RSE fellowship, I was faking it as a researcher. Um, whereas, <laughs> but it's always been about facilitating research. It's always been about holding grants as a collaborator rather than leading those. It's always been about helping uh, apply software engineering to different domains, but, but always very kind of quite close to the research itself. Anya? Um, yes, so I work in uh, the same uh, research software group as James. Um, we're sort of centrally shaped in that we serve the whole university, but we are embedded in a, in a particular department um, and grant funded. Uh, I spend the majority of my time writing software for others to use in research rather than pursuing my own uh, research agenda with a, a few small exceptions. Um, and I'd say I'm sort of a technical specialist in that I focus on our HPC, but a domain generalist. Cool, thanks guys. Um, and Kirsty, I know you're, you're technically our host today, not here representing as a trustee, but as you are a trustee, would you like to add anything and say anything yourself? Uh, yeah, I can do really quick. Um, so I'm an RSC uh, part time um, in an embedded uh, research group. So my background is in the academics. I kind of did the PhD in the subject and then moved over to doing technical support to academics within that region. So um, I'm very much on the researcher side rather than the RSC side. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Um, so that's kind of um, a bit about us. So now we're going to ask about you. Um, so hopefully everybody can see this and if you can open up in a browser or on your phone or anything you like um, to go to www.menti.com, use the code 94705862 and hopefully you can see this pop up on your devices. Somebody could throw me a couple of hearts. Oh, I'm seeing some hearts. Brilliant. Okay, we have some people. Cool. Just give you a second. Everybody's kind of come in. That's great. Okay, so um, I thought we'd start off with that sort of same sort of spectrum I talked about earlier, the research versus software engineering. Um, so we've just got a few questions that we can just go through. Um, so first of all, do you consider yourself to be an RSE? Just wondering if those people who've said don't know, would you be willing to come uh, to unmute yourself and just tell us why you don't know, if that's if that's okay? Hi, Terry. I'm Moran. I uh, said I don't know. Um, actually, I'm kind of new to the concept of RSCs, uh, even though I do work a lot of research with researchers and I am a software engineer myself um working on the software heritage uh, archive and kind of giving a platform for researchers and software developers to archive software so i I've, i'm answering don't know because i'm here to discover if i am okay that's really cool thank you thank you this is all really helpful information because like we, we just want to build this good picture of who who everybody is in the community um, did anybody else want to say anything? If there's not, I believe there's another don't know out there. Yeah, that's me. Um, it, te technically, research software engineer is my job title, but I consider myself more a software engineer because I don't actually do any research. Okay, that's cool. That's, that's interesting as well. Um, so that might play into the next question we have, which is what is your relationship with software? Um, so we've got a bunch of different options here. You can select more than one. Um, so we've got, I write simple scripts. I write complex software programs. I maintain others code. I use software or don't use software. And we also have an other category. You left off lots of uh, much angrier options in terms of I, I get angry. Yes, I, I did say I, I detest software and all technology forms. <laughs> Oh, cool. There's quite a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see that there's no one here who doesn't use software at the Sustainability Institute event. Um, is there anybody who answered other who'd like to sort of share? 
Uh, so I did. Um, I'm Graham. I'm an RSC in a group in Oxford. And um, we also, you know, the, uh, I, I was just thinking of other tasks we do, such as operations, um, but also uh, training in uh, you know, sort of software carpentries and related uh, training, which is you know, something I do with software that isn't any of those things. No, that's a really good one. That's a really great one. Okay. I was, oh, I was primarily thinking of software carpentry. I was also involved in carpentry, but also user support, for example. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you. Um, so oh, sorry, I do a lot of integration work. I don't know if I really count that as writing software. But I put together bits of complicated software to make something that's even more complicated. And I don't know if that's a simple script or a complicated script. No, it's, it's good for us to know these things. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. We are taking notes of all these comments in the background yes. as well, just so you know. They're not, um, they're not just going into the ether. Yes, no, we are definitely taking notes. Thank you for pointing point that out, James. Um, so, what is your relationship with research? Um, do you have your own research questions? Do you support others' research? Not involved in any research? Um, again, we have an other, and if anybody has an other that they'd like to share with the group, please do unmute and share. Okay, cool. I think that's everybody has answered. Thank you for that. It's quite interesting to see much more people are, are supporting rather than answering their own research questions but it's nice to see that we have a sort of a good mix of the two so this is our own version of that scale oh and that is my doorbell ringing i'm going to ignore that <laughs> and <laughs> the parcel can be left um right so um so one side we've got software engineering and one side we've got research and i just like to rank where would you sit yourself on that in terms of your day-to-day -day activity in terms of your interest levels and also the third one is kind of your career goal. So where would you like to be in say five years time? Where would you like to be working? Oh, the first people who answered right into the software engineering side of things. Bear in mind we said that RSE thing was kind of in the middle, but... Um... Okay, this is quite cool. This is quite I just cool. Said, this is a really cool little graph. I really like the way this is changing <laughs> over time. <laughs> it is a nice graph. How many meters made these lovely animations is, is impressive. But that's really interesting to see that day to day activity doesn't seem to match up with the interests, nor does it match up with the career goals sort of thoughts. And I think we've had about 22 answers previously. So I think we'll leave it there. But that is. That's really interesting. By the way, we're going to make these questions sort of available for more people to answer later. So if you're sort of feeling rushed, um, I apologize now, um, but you can have answer, another go at answering these. Um, so the next question is kind of what would you prioritize? Um, so there's sort of four options here. There's supporting others, um, answering research questions, uh, producing good software or driving change for RSCs. So in, for you, what are your priorities out of these? Ooh, having a few changes. This is very cool to watch. Something coming in. Okay, that, that's kind of interesting. So yeah, so producing good software is just about hitting up number one, but supporting others is sort of right behind. Um, which is kind of the things that I would put into the traditional kind of central RSC kind of role. Oh, supporting others, just taken over. I think that's a draw. Um, that's really interesting, guys. Thank you for that. Um, and now this is a kind of open, feel put to put in your text messages, uh, any and as short answers you want. Um, and it's kind of like, what are we missing when we ask these kind of questions? Um, was there anything that felt particularly not relevant to you that you'd like to tell us about? 
you know, if we're going to ask these these kind of questions to the entire IOC community that we know of, um, what what where have we gone wrong? Um, if so, if there's anything you want to put in, uh, this is a moment to enter in some short answers. And if there's absolutely nothing, I'll move on. But I'll give some people a minute or two to type. Job type, yep. We're actually moving on to sort of job type and where and how you work in, in a second. Yeah, infrastructure is something we haven't really mentioned, nor sort of that data engineering and analysis. Innovation, commercial split, that's a great one thing. Oh, these are brilliant. Oh, burden of project and person management. That's a nice one. Journey in, how are you funded and appraised? We're going to get a little bit onto appraised because I think we have something uh, related to that later, but we might have missed it. Training others, yeah. OT job work within academic job title, yeah. Yeah, I think background and where people come from is, is definitely an interesting one. What is a freelance RSE? Yeah, it's a vain question. I ask myself all the time as a freelance RSE. Um, okay, these are fantastic. Thanks, guys. Um, so I thought we can now move on to sort of the where do you work part. And you would have noticed that uh, we, we, us as the trustees, we had some ideas about, you know, being embedded or being centralized, um, working with teams. So first of all, quick, quick, easy question, are you in an RSE group? Yes, no, I lead a group, which is a slightly different thing, um, or don't know. And again, if there's anybody in the don't knows who wants to sort of share with us. I think I'm the don't know, and I don't know because I'm the only RSE, so I don't, that makes me a group or makes me not a group. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand that question. I thought I was once told as the only RSC that I was an RSC leader. Um, I'm going to say, Colin, that makes you, uh, yeah, an RSC lead, head of an RSC group. Yeah, no, it is a tricky one, though. If you are the only RSC, um, are you a group of, not, of one? OK, well, that is a really good mix between the yes and no's, um, which is, uh, which I wasn't expecting it to be quite as close as that so that's that's really interesting presumably some of those no's are people that I identified as saying that there weren't RSEs uh, to start with right yeah yeah um I'll, I'll come back to sort of what we're going to do with this data afterwards but we will be able to match you up from all of your different answers because Mentimeter is, is good um so where are you based um are you based in the research group in IT services in a central group are you self-employed in industry in a sort of non-academic institute um again I would love if the others would be able to tell us um what we've missed off this list the Turing Institute being both academic and industry <laughs> yep. although if I, um I I could argue that I'm in a central team within that institution. No, that's great. I did another because I'm I am in a research group, but I am now also an academic in a teaching department. So yeah. Yeah, teaching, that's not something we included. Kind of related to that one. I'm in a, a department, but I'm not assigned to a research group. Are you, are you sort of centrally to the department then? Where do you um, kind of sit? Actually, I'm central to the whole university, but they decided to lump me in with an academic department instead of a service department for political reasons. Okay. And I'm the last uh, other or not. There's a fifth one now. Uh, um, we are in a research institution, but the Software Heritage Archive is a kind of a team uh, which with, with very few researchers in it. Uh, so it's not like a research group and we do cater also software in industry. So it's kind of a mix. Oh, that's a good one to include. And then, so we've got a lot of people in research groups, a few people in Central and some in IT services, and somebody who's self-employed. Uh, shout out to the other self-employed people. Um, 
Hello. Um, just talking about self-employed, I was going to. I've come across a few other people here who are freelance um, RSEs and self-employed people. I was going to suggest that we try and get a little chat going in the networking session that's starting in half an hour's time or so. I'll post something in the Slack, but we can go in, go in a breakout room and talk about freelancey, self-employedy sort of stuff. So if anyone else is interested in that, feel free to join. That sounds like a great idea, Robin. I will definitely be part of that. Um, so this question is about uh, being sort of embedded versus central. And I've sort of broken it up into three categories. So this is sort of like where you are currently. Ideally, it can kind of be up to your to your own idea what you think is ideal. But I was thinking to sort of ideal for your current job role. And then again, career role, so in five years time, where would you like to be? And there is a good mix happening here. Is this like being embedded in research? Oh. It's a hard one to answer. I, I take it as being embedded with the people that you're writing software for and with, whether those are researchers or not. So in my case, I think about how close I am to the data scientists that I would work and write software for. Can I just chip in? I didn't answer that because now neither of those apply to me. Okay, yeah, I no. would still classify myself as an RSE, but I'm neither embedded nor central. So <laughs> that's yeah, why I'm here, yeah. trying to work out where I fit in <laughs> now. <laughs> if you could use a single word to describe where you are, what would you be? I'm in an academic post in an academic department. Okay. That's not a single word. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 that's right, Louise. I was it's a bit harsh with the saying single word, please. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, again, there's a quite a mix between the currently and ideally and, but I think this, this, the, the three of these look slightly more similar to each other than, than what we saw with the research versus software, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so what kind of contract do you have? Um, fixed term, permanent, zero hours. Again, we have an other field if anybody wants to, to share some other. I'll just give a shout out for open ended, which is as bad as fixed term, but pretending to be as bad as permanent. Yep, that's a good one to include. I have to reiterate every time I hear that, that there's no such thing as permanent. Everything at our university is open ended, subject to contract. So even academic posts, although they're described as permanent, they're all subject to funding. Yeah. Just wondering what's bad about permanent? Apart from you know, it being subject to funding. It can sometimes stagnate. Um, sometimes you have to risk losing a permanent job in order to progress, depending on where you are permanently posted. And um, also in terms of, um, you know, I, I, I give up the right to my own research agenda to follow the research agenda of my employer or the or the group that my team has agreed to work with yeah those could all be it could it could be very different though um and then do you or can you um say if that contract is what kind of type of contract is it so is it sort of professional services is it academic technical um engineering administrative again we have an other um, and this will split it by your previous answer, which I thought was very exciting. It's a very fancy graph to come straight up, isn't it? Here's my phone again. I'm about to get an email. Okay, um, I think we might, in the interest of time, move on. Um, so again, it's a sort of, there's a, as a, what are we missing? So in terms of thinking about the questions about where are people working, contract types they have, is there anything that we haven't asked and should have done? Or is there anything you felt was completely unrelevant? Um, freelance, yeah, definitely.
how long is the fixed term? Yeah, that's an interesting one. That might play into the freelance people as well who are living off three or four month contracts. What is a freelance RSC? Uh, geographic location. Yep, that could be an interesting thing. There could be differences in terms of geography. Career goals, yeah, we did want to ask a lot of questions about career goals, but we realized we were running out of time, which I thought was right, because we really are running out of time. Um, clear pathway for progression and promotion. Yeah, how long have you been? How secure do you feel in your employment? Okay, I think I'm gonna move on just because, feel free to continue entering, entering um, anything you're still typing, because it will come in. Um, but this is a, this is, you can enter more than one thing here, um, but what support would do you want from the society? Is there, what can, this is obviously is a big, big question, um, but as a society of research software engineers, um, what support can we give you uh, to help you develop your RSE role, to further your career interests, anything at all that you would particularly like to see happen? And what we're going to do is we're going to take that answer, these answers with all the previous information you've given us about your RAC type, and we can hope to, you know, direct what we're doing at people, at the right people. Hopefully. Clear the career pathways, professional mentoring, yet yeah, mentoring. We do have a mentoring scheme in the works, which I won't say much more about because I'm not on the mentoring working group. Business case of funding an RSC group, career progression uh, frameworks. RSC roles would only exist. Promote relevant PhDs. Oh, that's an interesting one. So, is that are you thinking PhDs that go directly in towards a research software engineer kind of career? Hi. Yeah, that's that's for me. So, yes, I'm at the moment. I'm in the position of. I'm a research assistant and I'm doing research software engineering, but if I was to do this as a career, which would be great, and that's what I ultimately would like to do, how do I identify what would be a good PhD or if I need to do a PhD at all to, to be able to progress in the career? So information around that would be really useful. That's so that's really sort, of, sort of getting started career advice, I guess, of which a, a major component will be PhD routes. Interestingly, I, I don't know how universal this is, but in my experience, research software engineers seem to be one of the groups of academics which have the least PhDs. I think that a sizable majority do have PhDs, but there's quite a lot of us that don't. Maybe that's a question you should have asked here. Yeah. Pleased to see mentoring featuring, featuring quite heavily. I don't think it's any surprise that that's something that the society are looking at. We have a working group, uh, sorry, a, a subgroup of trustees who are, who are developing um, some ideas around mentoring. It's always nice to see something coming up that we actually are trying to do. Um, so I was just going to say, because we were supposed to go into a discussion, but we've actually almost run out of time. Um, but I think that's because you've all entered some brilliant things and you've given us so much feedback. So thank you all so much. Um, there is a shared document for this um uh, uh mini workshop that was the word i was looking for um which um there has a section um at the bottom here on what support do you want from society so if there's anything anybody wants to sort of expand upon that they didn't have time or uh to say in the mentimeter um please do throw anything into the document um if you want um i think i have one minute left kirsty or have I got my timing all mixed up and we actually have loads of time left? Uh, let me check. I can't remember. I was so fixated in getting here on This time. is a pretty much time out. It I thought is, that was yeah. I pretty much time out. Of time Which, in case, I will skip all of these lovely people and just say thank you. <laughs> um, that was really, really helpful. Uh, yeah, we're going to make that sort of survey questions more open to everybody else at CW21 who wants to get involved. Um, and we really want to take this, like I said, um, we want to take your answers. We want to develop a really good survey that asks the right questions without missing anything 
um, to share with the wider community. And um, we're also going to try and write up a blog post based on what the kind of answers you're said and what we can do as a society to better support the whole community. Terry, will we also see um, like the four categories where we where what qualities match up to the four categories, or is that a bit out of scope? Um, well, what we were kind of hoping to do is we were hoping to like build a graph of sort of the research versus software embedded versus central and see where we could place people and if there were grouped similarities on that. So yeah, we are going to do a little bit of analysis and digging into the data that you have all generously provided. Thank you. That'd be really cool to see. Awesome.